Welcome back to the Anime and Manga News for the week ending October 18th, 2019. This week, this week brings some good news from Kyoto Animation following the devastating arson attack in July. The studio's president Hideaki Hata held a press conference in Kyoto last Friday and announced that 27 of the 33 victims injured in the fire have returned to work. Hata said during the conference that things are very difficult for the staff and the studio right now, but that they are grateful for all the messages and donations from around the world. <coughs> he stated that, quote, many staff are still feeling extremely stressed. The staff are talking and supporting one another while dealing with starting work again. We are working with medical institutions to provide psychological care, end quote. President Hatta also touched on the studio's working plans for the near future. They will work first on releasing the Violet Evergarden film sometime after April next year, and on evaluating the situation and how to move forward, which is certainly quite a reasonable thing. Uh, Friday also brought the official announcement for the studio's upcoming memorial service to be held instead of their fan event this year. The, quote, Memorial and Joining Our Prayers service, end quote, will be held November 3rd and 4th at the Miyako Messe event hall in Kyoto. Attendees will be able to pray and show their respects at an altar and will receive bookmarks and postcards from the studio. Some of the messages of support received from fans will also be on display at the service. So uh, obviously we continue to send our best thoughts and wishes to the studio and its staff through this difficult time. Yeah, so, you know, be aware that is a thing. Also in sad news, police arrested a man this week for making threats toward anime studio Kara on Twitter and other social media. According to police, the man claimed that Kara anime copyrights belonged to his family and admitted to the charges of threatening the studio and interfering with work duties. The man had allegedly been posting slanderous comments about the studio online for several years, but in July they escalated to death threats and references to KyoAni's tragedy, after which event Kara reported him to the authorities. Good. Um, a Tokyo man was also arrested for similar threats. Good that they reported, obviously. Um, Tokyo man was arrested uh, for similar threats toward game developer Square Enix back in August. Both suspects caused obstruction of business and threatened an attack similar to the one on Kyo Annie. Scary times. But on to happier news. Uh, this week brings good news for Studio Ghibli fans, or at least Ghibli fans who plan on subscribing to HBO Max. Uh, HBO Max and G-Kids, the North American distributor of the films, announced on Thursday that the upcoming streaming service will stream, quote, the entire Studio Ghibli film library, end quote. This will mark the first time the studio's films have appeared on any streaming platform. Now, if you've been following this news through the week, you might have seen a previous announcement that kind of spread throughout the internet that the studio had no plans to ever release their films on streaming services, ever, anywhere. Well, it turns out that statement was made back in 2018, and they have apparently changed their minds since then. The films will begin stre streaming in spring of 2020, which is when HBO's new streaming service is set to launch. The announcement notes that many favorite Ghibli titles will be available at launch, including Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, and Totoro, among others implying they might not have everything at launch, but maybe eventually, we'll see. Perhaps just Miyazaki movies, and then the rest of them, who knows. Speaking of award-winning movies, four anime films have been submitted for consideration in the animated feature film category for the next Academy Awards. On Wednesday, the Academy announced the official list of films submitted for nomination consideration in that category. Of the 32 submitted films, a maximum of five will receive an official Oscar nomination. That's just how that works. The anime films submitted to the category are Ayumu Watanabe and Studio 4C's Children of the Sea, Kitaro, Kus uh, sorry, Kitaro Kosaka DLE and Madhouse's Oko's Inn, Studio Trigger's Promare, and Makoto Shinkai's Weathering with You. The official nominations will be announced on January 13th, 2020, and the winners announced at the 92nd Annual Academy Awards on February 9th. Best of luck to everybody involved, of course, and be very curious to see how that turns out. Oops, wrong one. 
The official Twitter account for the multimedia project Assault Lily announced this week that Studio Shaft will be producing a television anime adaptation of the franchise. Uh, this franchise, created by doll maker Azone or Azone International and creative group Akus back in 2013, centers around a line of scale action dolls and figures. The Assault Lilies are, believe it or not, beautiful teenage girls defending the world from a mysterious threat. Now, it's a good thing Japan's teenagers are so adept at saving humanity, since apparently we adults are completely useless in that regard. Whatever. Um, in this story, the Earth of the near future faces imminent destruction by unknown giant creatures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to combat this threat, humanity creates weapons that combine science and magic, and that, of course, synchronize best with teenage girls. These young heroes, known as lilies, train at military facilities called gardens, where they learn to fight and protect. The voice cast of the new anime, anime adaptation will also be performing in a stage play adaptation of the universe of this in January. Shoji Saiki will be directing the anime at Shaft with uh, Mieko, ah, Mieko Hosoi designing the characters. For some reason, I'm having a tough time uh, with pronunciation today. Apologies. Singer, manga artist, and voice actress Sora Tokui member of the former idol group Milky Homes, and voice of Nico in Love Live, among others, will be making her directing debut this spring. She's directing a short movie adaptation of the contest-winning short story Sometimes on Those Sleepless Nights. The story was selected by Takui herself from the 2019 short story contest held by Monogatari.com, that's with a Y. The yearly contest gives aspiring authors 90 days to write a short story based on contest prompts, in addition to movie adaptation, to the movie adaptation, the winning story will also receive a comic, an audiobook, and a music video. The theme of this year's winning story is described as, quote, a female teen who cannot sleep on the night before the decisive battle, end quote. Could have been written for the earlier one. The short movie adaptation is set to come out in early spring of next year. This week brings news um, also about two brand new anime studios, something we don't normally get to talk about on here, but always exciting to see. YAP Ishigaki Productions, who have been making uh, backgrounds for anime since 1981, has announced the founding of a new studio in Akita. Gaki Pro A Studio will primarily recruit students from the local Akita University of Art, and will still focus mostly on anime backgrounds like their parent studio. The new studio officially starts services in April 2020, and aims to have a staff of nine employees to begin with, with an eventual goal of 20. Secondly, Bandai Namco Arts announced this week that they have invested in Studio Mother, a studio founded in May of this year by Voyager Holdings, who just happened to hold the licensing of space battleship Yamato. The new studio will plan and produce anime, and hopes to create hit content, don't we all? Bandai Namco's investment is intended to particularly bolster the, no surprise, Space Battleship Yamato franchise. The studio's first project will be a compilation film of the Star Blazers Space Battleship Yamato 2202 anime series, followed by a second season to air in fall of 2020. So, cool. New Yamato, new Star Blazers. Awesome. Speaking of new anime, uh, Crunchyroll revealed on Tuesday that it'll be teaming up with digital publisher Webtoon, to create original content for the Crunchyroll streaming service. The new animated projects will be based off of Webtoon's own property catalog, which includes a range of comics and manga-inspired series in genres from comedy and romance to drama and thrillers. All the stuff you kind of expect. Um, it was also noted that both Webtoon and Crunchyroll will be handling the licensing, distribution, and retail of each new series. So, interesting division of labor there. So if you want to find some new reading content and want to get ahead of the curve, try reading some webtoons. Your favorite might even end up on Crunchyroll in the future. Who knows? Uh, let's see here. Uh, finally, an announcement for fans, this is a weird one, of the classic 1986 Saint Seiya Knights of the Zodiac anime series, or anyone interested in becoming one. The first 41 episodes are now available on Netflix in North America, New Zealand, and Australia, uncensored and with new subtitles. Additionally, the first 15 episodes, that is the show's first season, features a brand new English dub. 
In their announcement on Twitter, Toy Animation told fans to stay tuned for more updates, so keep an eye out. Hopefully more episodes will be added, and the new English dub might even continue.